Hello everyone, it is Jesus, and I am going to explain remote code execution. That is where you are using something like a web application, and you get the server to execute code remotely, right? From your computer, you're now executing arbitrary code on the remote system. So it all starts with this, an API. Here we have something that's gonna make some kind of backups. This is based on a true story. I wrote a system for backing up VPSs that ended up being vulnerable to this. I was a teenager when that happened. <laughs> but yeah, this is a vulnerability that's very near and dear to my heart. So they give us the ID of the thing they want to back up. And we call this function on it. And let's go ahead and code this so you can see realistically how a developer might make this, this mistake. So they say, OK, so we're going to call something on the system. So let's say they call a, a local. Sorry, I, uh, I need to make a quick executable that they can then run called like make backup, call it make back. And in reality, this just won't do anything because we don't actually want to make a backup. We just want to show how this vulnerability works. So they'll call make back. And what do they call it with? Well, they're going to call it with the ID supplied in this argument, right? Well, there we go. That does what we need. Well, I guess we need, it, we need it to give a response, right? So I forget how to do that. Flask response. Sorry, I'm not using, I think it's just with return. I don't know, I don't use Flask that often. Yeah, I'm just gonna return a string. Again, I'll say return, okay. So let's go ahead and run this Flask app. So this is it. This is the thing that makes our backup, right? Sorry, I'm supposed to say the type and then the, uh, yeah. So this is supposed to make a backup. I need to make it executable, our make back script. So ideally they would make a backup. They'd supply an ID. We would say, okay, right? It's getting made or whatever. <laughs> okay, I'll do Flask run to run our app. It is working. And now I will open up a new command line and try to actually use it. I'm going to use curl, localhost. I guess it's on port 81. That's weird. Oh, nope. It tried to do it on 81, and then I think it didn't want to. So it's actually on 5,000. Did it say 5,000? Yeah, 5,000. So we do that curl. We get a 404 because it's supposed to be a backup. And then we give it this integer. So let's say it's 9,001. Great, it tells us, okay. All right, and that, that should be the end of the story, right? There we go, creates backups. We're done, we did it. We are developers. Oh, so cool, learning to code, right? Aren't we smart? But no, we're, we're not smart, <laughs> right? This is code, you can never be smart enough to get around vulnerabilities. And of course, there is a vulnerability. Um, so let's say someone were to make the ID this number, Okay, and then they were to include a semicolon. Okay, that should be part of the ID, right? No biggie. And I don't know, they say something like, uh, what's a good command for me to run right here? I'll say touch, LOL. Let's see if that works. I don't actually know if that's gonna work. Okay, I have to figure out, how do you, how do you use space in a URL? Because I can't just say space, that's what it's mad about. URL encode space. Okay. Because when you have a space in the URL, it's actually percentage sign 20. Okay, so that was not found on the server. Interesting, so it doesn't consider that. Oh, because it's gonna look for an int. Okay, so let's just say that IDs, which makes more sense, IDs don't have to be integers. Um, an ID is a string of characters and all of that. We could still make, by the way, this is still a security issue, even if we only allow integers. But just for the purpose of demonstrating this, let's say our IDs are like 7, 8, da, da, 8, da, 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 da. Okay, and then we'll start our app over again. And we will try this again, and it says okay. And look, it created the file LOL. It actually, it did it, it's right there. Um, and we can include any command we want. Why is that going to work? Because on Bash, which is the scripting language of Unix systems, right now I'm on a Mac, which is a Unix system. So
So that means that it has bash as its default scripting language. I mean, it doesn't mean that a lot of Unixes use other ones, but <laughs> it's common. In bash, uh, hopefully you can see this terminal. Yeah, you should be able to. In bash, when you want to separate things by line, you can either use new line characters or you can end them in a semicolon. And that means, hey, this is basically a new line. So this is now gonna be the ls command and then the ls command as though we're on a new line. You can use semicolons that way. So here, when we say dot slash make back and then whatever the ID is, the ID includes a semicolon. So it says make back, semicolon, right? Semicolon, touch. Touch means create a command. Did I say create a command? Create a file. Okay, so it's going to create the file, and then the name of the file, oh well, it includes this URL encoded space, which Flask will convert right back into the space character for us. Thank you so much, Flask. And we can now execute arbitrary code. What could we do with this? Well, we could install a cron job that will run every 10 minutes and connect back to our command and control server to run whatever we tell it to run. Um, we could do anything we want, basically. I mean. <laughs> We could exfiltrate key files um, by using Etsy password. This is on a Mac, you actually don't have Etsy password. It's authentication works totally differently. I mean, we can read it, but sorry, Etsy password. Etsy password is just users. It's Etsy shadow. Uh, that's where hashes of passwords are. So you can try to remotely crack them. That's a lot quicker than cracking them over the network where there might be something like fail to ban in place. So yeah, pretty scary, huh? <laughs> Um, that's how it works. So I hope this has been educational for you. Learn a little bit about this very important vulnerability. It's, it's a vulnerability that crops up all the time. Um, it's often the goal of another vulnerability. Like people are often trying to get remote code execution when they do all, when they chain together exploits, because this is basically how you pwn a system, right? This is how you're going to install malware, build persistence and do whatever else you're going to do. This has been a pretty simple little demonstration. But you can get creative, right? Once you have this really simple code out, you can start saying, hmm, what else can I do? Um, like, what if we had had it only be integers? What would you, how would you, how, how would you exploit that, right? I mean, you only have integers. That's going to be pretty challenging, right? But still, anytime you have this uh, arbitrary input being allowed, that's, uh, that's scary. So, yeah. Yes, yeah, so when you allow these arbitrary parameters, that's bad. And the final question is, what could you do about this, right? What should you be doing instead of this? Well, basically, instead of OS system, there are libraries where you pass the different arguments as a list, right? And by passing them as a list, you can't accidentally interpret parts of this parameter as a separate command. So I forgot off the top of my head. Python, I'm going to look it up real quick. You can't see me, but I'm, I'm totally Googling this. Yeah, you'd want to use subprocess.run. There we go. I'm going to put it in the code real quick so you can see, because otherwise I'm just over here Googling stuff, learning, and then you're going to be over there like, tell me all this fun stuff you're doing. <laughs> so. <sighs> okay, subprocess.run. It's good to know, but i got to give you the actual... Okay, here we go, subprocess.run. So I'll bring it into the code so you can take a look. Because, I mean, most of you watching this are probably coming from a hacking perspective and you just want to know how to hack this. But it's also important to know how to fix it, right? I mean, even as a pen tester, you're going to give clients recommendations on what they should do. So, All right, so let's just do the exact same thing. We're going to run the same command. And then we're going to pass ID as the second argument. And now, instead of saying, hey, run this string as though it were in the shell, it'll say, hey, run this and make this the first argument. Instead of, instead of it basically creating separate arguments or ending the command or anything like that. No, it's going to run this executable. Everything else we pass will be arguments, which is better because that's what we want. All right, now let's switch it up and see if we can still do the same hack. So we're going to call this and we're going to touch a file called still to see if it still works. And yeah, there you go. It does not work. Well, actually, because we get something else. Okay. This is also bad. <laughs> Let's see. Oh no. Oh no. This is fun. Sorry. I, I didn't test this beforehand, 
not because I'm lazy, but because I like to do these things live. I feel like it's a little more fun that way. So we get an exception. It says, let's see. Hopefully you guys can see these arguments. I know your screen's probably pretty small compared to mine. Oh, exec format error. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna Google that really, really quick. Okay, sub process run and exact format error. Oh, okay, so it wants to know how to execute it. And it looks like I did I just didn't put the uh, well we'll see. It wants the shebang line, it's like I don't know how to because it's gonna think it's actually like a system executable. So I actually probably didn't need to restart the system. There we go. So it gives us OK, because that's the only thing we ever return. But if you notice, it did not create the file this time. Great, that's all we wanted. Right, so before it would have made it, and now it's just going to run this make back command, which just echoes one. And it doesn't work anymore. Our hack doesn't work. Beautiful. We did it, guys. All right, thank you so much for your time. Um, I hope this was as fun for you as it was for me. I I love uh, coding and hacking, so getting to code something vulnerable, hack it, and then fix it, mm, it's beautiful. Anyway, see you next time. Bye-bye.